good morning. So, so we're continuing our series today, Rethink Religion. And, and as we've spent the last two weeks uh, ju just looking at it, hopefully we've kind of thought a little differently about what we think of religion or, or even maybe how we do religion. Um, because sometimes we, we think of it the wrong way or we like do religion the wrong way. And, and, and back in week one, we looked at pure religion and, and we saw that pure religion was about two things. It was about believing God's word and obeying it. So it, it's about Jesus and his word. And, and then last week we looked at, you know, how sometimes we get caught up with this whole judging a book by its cover. We get caught up with first impressions, and, and you know, we make this first impression on whether it's people or on religion, on based on what someone else may have said, or maybe what someone's done. <clears throat> and, and unfortunately, even in our own life, we sometimes create our own first impressions on people. You know, because we become judgy on, on what someone's like or maybe the lifestyle that they live or what they do or the way they dress or the way they look. And, and instead of looking at what God looks at, and that's the heart. Because remember, God looks at our heart and, and we learn that God, that pure religion is us seeking the Lord and helping others, but doing it with a humble heart having some humility to us. So this week, as we continue this series, I want to talk about worship. Talk about worship and, and what worship is. And, and you know, to me, worship's many things. You know, many people, when they think of worship, they think, oh, we're going to have a night of worship. And they think of music. Worship is so much more than that. Worship is so much deeper than just music. Think about it. Why do you get up in the morning? You got up this morning, you got out of bed, you put clothes on, and you came to church. Why? Why'd you do that? Did you come here to worship? Maybe you came here to see some friends. Maybe you come here to hang out or maybe listen to some music or listen to some bad preaching or, you know, <laughs> whatever it may be. But have you ever noticed that most of us, every Sunday, we do the same thing, right? We get up, it's, we put on pants, or we put on a dress, and we come to church. So why? Why do we come to church every Sunday? You know, why, why do you come here today? You know, we, we come to church, and, and we take time to sing. We take time to pray. We take time to listen to the Word. We take time to give our tithe or our offering. We have that time of fellowship with each other. So we have all of these different things. And even today, we partook in communion. And now when a lot of people think about that, they think, okay, well, that's worship. Worship's still bigger than that. Worship is still so much more than that. And it's so much deeper than that. So what's the real reason you're here today? To be honest with yourself, answer the question. What is the real reason you're here today? Are you here because maybe you felt guilty and you had to come here? Well, maybe you're here because this is what I do on Sundays. Well, this is what I do. I've done this on Sundays since I was a little kid. So on Sundays, I got to get up, I got to get dressed, and I got to come to church. And the pastors tell me next week, I don't have to put on good clothes to come to church. And I'm going to be so confused on what I wear to church because we're having a cookout afterwards. And should I wear a shirt and tie and then maybe take off the jacket and, and take off the tie? Or what should I do? You know what? Wear shorts or jeans and flip-flops next week. Do something you've probably never done. Some of us are like, cool, that's how I dress every week. <laughs> Some of us are going to be like, man, I can't do that. Because you're thinking about church uh, of something that it's really not. You're looking at church as something that's about you. It has nothing to do with you. There's a news flash. Church has nothing to do with you. We come to worship for one reason. We come to worship God. That's what we're here to do. We're here to worship the Lord. 
We're not here to worship a building. We're not here to worship people in the pews. We are here to worship the Lord. It's not about the way we dress. It's not about the way we look. If we combed our hair, brushed our teeth, or what we have on, it's about the heart of what we've come here to do. And we've come here to worship the Lord. You see, some people get so caught up on, oh, you got to be quiet in church. You know, be still. Be still in church. You know, then you got other people who are all like, man, it's all about the joy of coming to church. And they'll quote Psalm 47, 1, clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. Amen. And then some people are sitting in there going, man, why are they raising their hands? Why are they saying amen? Why are they doing this? Because unfortunately we've gotten this, what we've grown up with has been entrenched in us and these, all these man-made, this is what church should be and this is what worship should look like. Like I said, it's not about any of us. It's not about anything we've done in the past. It's about worshiping him, coming in here and worshiping the Lord, our creator, the one who is still living today, who died on a cross for us so that we may live eternally with him. That's what we're here for. So guess what? It's not about the music. It's not about the color of the carpet. It's not about giving. It's not about any of them. It's about seeking him with the whole heart. And that's what we're going to look at today. What does God-centered worship look like? And I think we need to understand what worship means. So according to the American Heritage Bible, it says, the reverent love and devotion accorded a deity, an idol, or a sacred object. And Holman Bible Dictionary says this, human response to a perceived presence of the divine, a presence which transcends normal activity and is holy. And see, I believe people who come into church and they leave empty is because they came in empty. They didn't bring anything into church with them. They brought the wrong ideas. They brought the wrong focus. And that's what we're going to look at today. And I think you need to understand that, that we can't perform all these religious acts that we can think of. But if we're doing them for show, God's going to reject them. So if it's about us or if it's for show, God's going to reject it. And ultimately, he's going to do this because God doesn't require our perfection because he knows none of us are perfect and we're ever going to be perfect. But he does desire our pure hearts and honest motives. Pure hearts with honest motives. So if you have your Bible, we're going to be in Amos chapter 5. Yes, that is the Old Testament. So Amos chapter 5, verses 14 through 24. And don't worry if you can't find it in your in your in your Bible, it's going to be up here on the screen. You know, everyone with a digital Bible, it's quick and easy to pull out. You just Bible and you're able to scroll through real quick. Um, if you're actually grabbing a Bible, it's near the end of the Old Testament. It's more than halfway through the Bible. So about three quarters of the way through mine. But anyways, Amos chapter 5, verses 14 through 24. And it says, Pursue good and not evil so that you may live. And the Lord, the God of armies, will be with you as you have claimed. Hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the city gate. Perhaps the Lord, the God of armies, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore the Lord God, the God of armies, the Lord says, there will be wailing in all the public squares. They will cry out in anguish in all the streets. The farmer will be called on to mourn, and professional mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass among you, the Lord has spoken. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. What will the day of the Lord be for you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be like a man who flees from a lion only to have a bear confront him. He goes home and rests his hands against the wall only to have a snake bite him. Won't the day of the Lord be darkness rather than light, even gloom without any brightness in it? 
I hate, I despise your feasts. I can't stand your stench of your solemn assemblies. Even if you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. I will not regard your regard for your fellowship offerings of fat and calf. Take away from me this noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice flow like water and righteousness like an unfailing stream. Heavenly Father, as we dig in, Lord, may... May our hearts be opened up to exactly what you want us to see. Lord, may we see worship for what it is, that it's about you and not about us. And Lord, may your words be my words, and may your name be glorified through it all. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. So here from Amos, we're seeing this rebuke about performing religious acts for show. All about the show, it's not about for him, it's about me, myself, and I, and you, because that's what we want to do. As we look at this text, it made me wonder, does this mean we shouldn't raise our hands for worship? Or maybe that we shouldn't dance, or or maybe swing flags or do anything like that? I don't think that's what it's saying. Because we got to understand, all of those things can be done out of reverence for the Lord. You know, some people raise hands, some people don't. You know, some people are the the touchdown makers. Some people are the prayers. Some people are the waistliners. You know, some people just cross their arms. Everyone's different. And that's okay. It's perfectly okay because it's about the motive of what you're doing, not about actually what you're doing. And, And unfortunately, many people will judge someone off of the fact that I can't believe they're raising their heart arms in church what are they doing raising their man there's there's talking when the pastor's talking are you crazy yeah coming up raising being raised catholic i I saw this thing i thought was pretty funny that this guy walked into a very liturgical church and and the pastor said something praise the lord and the person next to him turned and says oh we don't praise the lord in here And someone said, oh, yes, we do. It's on page 15 of the lectionary. Because they're so used to doing what is, is, this is what we do in church. If the priest says this, you say this. If they say this, you say We get so caught up and we think that's worship. Worship comes from the heart. Worship comes from the way we are, the way we feel. And it's the motive behind what we do. And that's ultimately what it comes down to is our motive. If we're doing it for show to make us look like we're holier than thou, then our heart is in the wrong place. And God sees that your heart is in the wrong place. If you're truly worshiping the Lord and your hands are up, praise the Lord. Don't do it for somebody else. You got to do what God, uh, what you feel right as, as reverent as you worship the Lord. And everyone is different. And none of us know what the other one is actually thinking. None of us know the motive of somebody else. Because it's an individual chance to worship and take that time together, even as a large group. I mean, you think about worship in the Old Testament. Worship in the Old Testament was on their knees, prostrate in front of the Lord. In the New Testament, a lot of it means, you know, you look at the words and it's more about its reverence or its... It's um, honoring and seeking and doing all these things for the Lord. And, and, and hopefully today we're going to answer that actual question. What's your worship? Is it for show or is it for him? Because if we're going to have God-centered worship, it needs to be for him. Not for me, not for you, not for the show of it. It's for him and him alone. And that's where our focus needs to be. We need to worship him in all that we do because why do we come together? We come together to worship the Lord, amen? Amen. That's what we come for. That's ultimately what we come in here for. And when we get ready to come into church, when we get ready to worship, we need to understand that our worship is to be on him. That should be our focus. And it's not just a Sunday morning thing. 
This isn't just something we do on Sunday mornings. Worship is every single day of the week how you live your life. Because how you live your life shows what you're devoted to. And if you're devoted to the Lord, you're going to worship him every single day. Not just on Sunday mornings for an hour and 15 minutes. You're going to do it each and every day. You're going to continue to seek him and worship him and do what he calls you to do. Because as I said before, we worship him because he lives. That's why we worship the way we do. And if we come into worship, and I think someone who comes into worship and receives nothing, they leave with nothing, it came down to what they actually came in with. If we come in with a bunch of junk on our shoulders and all this stuff on our mind that we're not actually taking the time to dig into his word or or we're thinking about something totally different than him when we're in here worshiping, do you really think you're going to leave with anything? You're going to leave with the same baggage you carried in. You're going to leave with the same attitude you had when you came in here. <clears throat> now, granted, you may feel a little bit better, you know, because, hey, you know, I, I, I feel a little better, but I still got all this other stuff that I was thinking about. Because we get caught worrying about other things instead of him. What are these people saying? What are these people doing? Well, then the other thing we get caught up with is, question, is worship traditional or contemporary? Neither. Because it's not a style. There is nothing stylish about worship. Worship isn't a style. Contemporary or traditional is a style. And the worship's not about either one. Worship is about who we come to worship and how we come to worship. Yes, music can help us connect to God, and, and some people connect better with, with him, some with traditional. Some don't connect at all with music. I can listen to worship music during the day, and it just fills me. Because I do. I can't sing. I can't play an instrument. God help. You know, I pray for the people who got to sit next to me when I do sing. Because it says a joyful noise, maybe it is to him, but not the person next to me. But there is something about music, and guess what? It's a combination of both. I can go traditional, I can go contemporary. It depends on that day and the words to the music. Because believe it or not, it's less tempo and more the words that mean something to me. When the words of the music are, are giving reverence to the Lord and it's seeking him and talking about his goodness and his glory and everything that he does, that just fires me up. Because it gets me into that mode of actually doing what I should be doing, worshiping him in everything that I do. <clears throat> you think about, you know, not only the music, but even the preaching. All of it should be geared towards him. You know, as we get together during the week and, and we look at what music we're going to play and, and what I'm going to preach and, and the scripture that we're going to preach on, we try and get it all to work together. And, and the reason for that is if we're connected together between the songs and between the preaching and between everything that's going on, maybe it'll help each of us connect a little easier. But it all depends, like I said, what you come in here with. Because if you come in with the attitude of, I don't like this or I don't like that, are you really going to get anything out of the message or the, or the song? Are you really going to get anything out of worship whatsoever? No. Because you're automatically coming in judging because you want it to be about you and not about him. So it comes down to where's your heart when you come through the door? And, and that heart needs to start every Monday morning, and continue every day, 24-7, seven days a week. Keep going, keep it moving. It's not just about here. And ultimately what it comes down to when you look at it is God-centered worship has to come from our hearts. Our hearts have to be right in order for us to worship the Lord. If our hearts aren't right, are we really going to worship him? No. If our heart's in the wrong place, are we going to worship him? No. You want to know how your heart's in the right place? Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 say this. 
Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove that the will of God, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. If we're going to worship, it's got to flow from our hearts to him. It's got to come from the inside. It's got to come from here. It's got to be focused on him and him and him alone. That's exactly what Romans 12 is telling us. And understand, you cannot live willfully disobedient to God Monday through Saturday and think you're going to come in here on a Sunday morning and worship God. You cannot willfully be disobedient throughout the week and think you're going to come in here and worship him and feel like you're getting something out of it. Because if your heart's not in it, guess what? Your heart ain't going to be in it when you come in here on a Sunday. You're going to come in here at a tradition or for some other reason, and then you're going to leave and be like, man, I didn't like that preaching. I didn't like that music. I didn't like nothing about it. My friends weren't even there. You can't be willfully disobedient to the Lord and worship him at the same time. Light and darkness can't be in the same place. So it takes work each and every day of the week to actually do what we're called to do. Now understand, there are going to be times when we struggle. There's going to be times when we come into church and we're just, man, I'm just not feeling it. Look inside and see where your heart's at. Because each one of us struggle with stuff. We all got stuff that happens during the week. We had a bad week at work, something just happened in the family, and we bring that into church, and we're struggling, and then we don't feel like we had a good Sunday of worship. That's okay. You can make it up by continuing throughout the week. Continue to move forward. It's a big difference between struggling and being willfully disobedient because we're all going to struggle. We're all going to have those times where we don't feel the presence of God. And, and you know, we, we try and figure that, you know, I just got to get to church on Sunday. And then maybe on that Sunday you come in here and you hear a song or you hear a message. And all of a sudden your heart starts to end up right. And, and then you leave here, man, my week's getting better. And you start seeking him and praising him and you start to worship him instead of worshiping what the world had around you. Because understand, it's not only on Sundays. Dr. Tony Evans actually said this, if you limit worship to where you are, the minute you leave that place of worship, you will leave your attitude of worship behind like a crumbled up church bulletin. You know how many bulletins I pick up out of the pews during the week? So think about that. If, if you just think, hey, this is where I worship, as soon as you leave here, what are you doing? Are you really worshiping him? Are you actually living your life for him every single day of the week, or do you just do it on Sundays? Well, I'm here. i got to come because it's a tradition. What do I do every Sunday morning? I put on this outfit and I go to church. Don't let it be a tradition. Let it be about him because you've come to worship him and seek him with the whole heart. Because that's what we're called to do. We're called to love him. And I want to let you know, I was excited yesterday. I get excited at different times during the year. But at 10 o'clock yesterday morning, and I turned on ESPN, and college game day was on. Man, I was like a little kid in a candy store. <laughs> Even from the wife, yes, I was. I was like so excited because you got to understand, I really love college football. I love watching. I can watch college football from Thursday when it starts all the way through the weekend. 
And what did I do all day yesterday? I watched college football except for the time I went and I had to trim the hedges and do some yard work. And, and you see, I, I love everything about football. I, I mean, it could be one of them, you know, 56, 54 games where there was like no defense on the field and it was just this big offensive explosion. And they were just back and forth down the field. But man, I love a defensive battle too. When it's like, 30 seconds to go and the team wins by a field goal. And they weren't able to do anything. I just love everything about college football. Now there's probably someone in here going, I don't like nothing about college football. I could care, exactly. I don't know nothing about football. I could care less about it. But now think about it. For people who love football, there's nothing more exciting. For a person who doesn't love God, they'll never understand what worship is. But for a person who loves God and wants to live their life for God, they'll have that same reaction. It's that, oh my God, game day's on. Oh my God, Sunday's here. Oh my God, I get to worship God every day of the week. Every minute of every day I get to worship him. That's how we should feel. We should feel so excited when we wake up in the morning that we get to praise the Lord. It shouldn't be, oh man, I got to go to court today. Oh man, I, I got to go to work. I got to deal with my boss. Don't you say yes. <laughs> I got to deal with my boss, who happens to be the pastor. <laughs> I, I, got, I got to do, oh man, the traffic is going to be miserable. Man, during that traffic, you can just turn up K-Love or turn up Way FM or turn up the Bible playing in your vehicle and you can worship the Lord while sitting in traffic. You can raise your hands in your car and worship because you ain't going nowhere anyways. Traffic's bumper to bumper. And you can worship on your way to work. You can worship him while you're in work. You can worship him while in meetings. You can worship him while in the courtroom. You can worship him anywhere you are throughout the day. But you've got to choose to do it. You've got to make sure your heart's in the right place and that you're doing it because you want that close relationship to him. See, Amos here, he's talking about people putting on a show and how it's not acceptable to God. God doesn't want a show. He doesn't want us holier than now. He wants us to live our life every single day for him. Not just on Sundays. Not just coming in, hey, brothers and sisters, great to see you today. Because that's not what any of us should be here for. It's great to see friends. It's great to see family members. It's great to fellowship together. But it needs to start when you're alone. When you take that private time with the Lord and you take that time throughout the week seeking Him, seeking to praise and glorify and honor His name in everything that you do. When you bring that person in here on a Sunday, guess what? You're going to be worshiping. You're going to get something out of it because you've opened up your heart to him throughout the week. And if you've opened up your heart to him throughout the week, I'm telling you, when you come in on a Sunday, he's going to give you something. He's going to give you something that you can leave here with, that you can apply into your life, and that you can not only change your life, your family's life, and your neighbor's life, you can start to change the world. But it starts with you. It starts with you opening up your heart and seeking to worship him each and every day. Each and every day. In everything that we do. So do you worship to honor God? Think about it. Do you actually really worship to honor God? Or do you worship because it's your own preference? I do, well, this is my preference and this is the only way I'll worship. Do you think God only takes worship one way? He accepts every one of our worship when it's from our hearts. And every one of us may worship differently. 
Amos warns these people who falsely think of themselves as religious. We get caught up the same way. We're called to be holy, not holier than thou. If you remember the religious leaders we talked about last week in Jesus' day, Jesus referred to them as whitewashed tombs. They appeared clean on the outside, but were nasty and defiled on the inside. We get caught up that same way we put on this outward persona of who we are. God looks at our heart. He knows our heart. And if our heart is in the right place, our worship will be for the right reason. It'll be for him. Even Amos talking here, talking about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord come, when it comes, there are going to be people who are highly disappointed. They're going to be looking for reward and they're going to get judgment. They're going to hear those words, depart from me, I do not know you. The day of the rapture, there'll still be preachers in the pulpit and people in the pews because they're in it for themselves and not for him. Our entire focus should be on him. Even in 1 John, it says this, 1 John 4, 17 through 21, it, it connects that confidence to the day of judgment. It says, in this, love is made complete with us that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And we have this command from him, the one who loves God must love his brothers and sisters. So what's your pure motive? Is your motive actually pure? And I think one of the ways that we can tell if it's pure or not is in Hebrews 4. Verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than a double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's able to judge the intentions of the heart. So what's your worship? How's your worship doing? Is it for show or is it for him? Because remember, worship is not about you. It's not about me. It's about him. And if we come in here focused on him, and we remain focused on him, we will leave here every Sunday getting something from him and his word. Because that's what we should be about. Two things, Jesus and his word. That is what should matter in our life. And if we're seeking him and spend time in his word, guess what? He's going to know our heart and our heart is going to be focused on him. Take time this week and truly focus on him with your worship. Focus on that connection, having your heart in the right place. And then you know the best thing you can do is bring that person who you've been all week long, who has been focused on the Lord, whose heart has been connected to him, bring that person back next week. Bring that person back into the house. Because I'll guarantee that if you do that throughout the week and when you walk in here next Sunday, you'll be a different person. Your focus will be totally on him instead of anything else. Be the change you want to be. Take, take time and actually focus your heart on the Lord throughout this week. Don't focus on ourselves. Don't focus on the world around you. Take a week and truly focus on him and what he wants you to do in his life, in your life. 
Because remember, we can perform all the religious acts we can think of, but if we're doing them for show, God's going to reject them. Do you want what you do each and every day to be rejected by God? When you're out here saying, I'm doing this for him, but he knows your heart, you're really doing it for yourself? He's going to reject it. And for some of us, it's going to hurt. Because none of us want to be rejected. Especially rejected by a loved one. And if we love the Lord and we're serving the Lord, the last thing we want to do is be rejected by the Lord. Make sure your worship is real. It's not an act. Make sure it's not for show. Because remember, God doesn't require our perfection, but he does desire pure hearts and honest motives. Pure hearts and honest motives. See, our job is to be honest with God and with ourselves. And if he points out there's something wrong we're doing in our life, then we've got to change it. We've got to make that change. So I want to encourage you this week, if, if during this message or even during the time of the week when you're spending that time with the Lord and worshiping him throughout the week, if he points out a flaw in your life, change it. If he points out something that you're doing that's wrong or the way you're worshiping him is wrong, make that change. Pure heart, pure motives. That's what we're called to do. And maybe you're sitting here and you're like, well, that's really good, Pastor, but I haven't even accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, so how am I going to do all this other stuff? Well, that's easy. That's the easiest part of all. And I say it's easy because you don't have to be perfect. He's going to accept you right the way you are. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to be able to say some creed or pass some test or do all this crazy stuff. God loved you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for you. And his word says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you see, it's back to that whole heart thing. It's back to believing and confessing and knowing and making him the Lord of your life. And then as you get your heart right and you have that relationship with Jesus, then he starts to change you from the inside out. I do want to let you know that when you accept Jesus, the world's going to be the same. The same people you hung out with before you accepted him are going to be the same people even after you accepted him. And they're still going to want to do the same things they used to do. And maybe the same things that you were doing. The difference is going to be you. Because once you accept Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, the Holy Spirit is going to start guiding you to do what's right and what's good and what's pure and what's done with the right motives. And some of the things you were doing or some of the people you were hanging out with might not be the ones you need to be with anymore. Or maybe them are the ones that now you have to tell them about your Jesus. And, and as they see that change in your life, that maybe you can plant that seed so that they will accept Jesus and start to change and start to have pure motives and a pure heart. Because that's what we need in this world today. We need people to be real. People to be pure. Have a pure motive and a pure heart in everything that you do. Because in this world, they say it's about you. Or they say it's about me. So, you know, it's, it's not about God. It's not about being pure. It's about doing what the world says to do. We're to be transformed. And we're to be different from the world. So, so if you're still sitting there saying, well, Pastor, I... I still like my traditional music. That's okay. I still like my contemporary music. That's okay too. Man, them people raising their hands, they got issues. Well, no, maybe you got an issue. Man, people are dancing in the aisles. 
okay. It's kind of weird. I even think that's weird. But at the same time, if they're worshiping with a pure heart and it's not about them and they're worshiping the Lord, that's what we should seek. That people are worshiping the Lord with pure hearts, pure motives, not trying to take the attention upon themselves. Because it's not about any of us. Our worship needs to be focused on Him. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and Lord, we come to worship you. And Lord, sometimes we get caught up in this life where, where you know, we, we just worry about what we like, or what our preference is, or what our tradition is. And, and, and Lord, you know, well, this is what we've always done and always did. But Lord, if it didn't come with them pure motives and that pure heart, you didn't accept it anyways. And I think that's the reality that we need to face is, Lord, you don't always accept what we do. You don't always accept our worship because we come with the wrong motives. Lord, may we all have pure hearts when we come to you. May we be a people who worship throughout the week as long as we're awake, that we're seeking you, we're worshiping you, we're praising your name. And Lord, that we make it all about you. And Lord, that way when other people see us and they, they want to know what's going on, we can let them know, hey, we're just worshiping our Lord. And we're worshiping him because he lives. And thank God he lives. And Lord, there's anyone in this room who, who doesn't know you, Lord, I ask that they make that move today. That they come to have that personal relationship with you. And Lord, there's someone here who's still got the wrong motives. And they're sitting here still grumbling because it's not what they want. Touch your hearts, Lord. Make them make that move to seek you with that whole heart instead of themselves. Lord, may we honor you in all that we do. And make this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us here today at FBC Lantana for Church Online. And, and, and if, if you enjoyed what you saw today, I'd just like to ask you to go ahead, go to our website and, and help support this ministry as we try and outreach and reach the lost for Jesus Christ. And you can just go to our website, fbclantana.com slash give. Um, and you can make an online donation right there. Again, I encourage you to get connected to a local church. And especially if during this message you felt compelled to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, definitely go tell somebody. Let someone know because that is the greatest decision you could ever make in your life. And, and from there, get connected to a local church. Hey, we would love to provide you with some resources with that. You can go to our website, fbclantana.com. And on the very front page, you say, give my life to Jesus. Click on there, and at the bottom of there, there's some links and some good information for you. And just wanted to say, welcome to the family.